Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this webinar of Fleet LATAM in support of Geotap. The webinar is called Benefiting from TCO and Safety Experiences in LATAM. This webinar is for information purposes only and is not intended as a commercial offer. The webinar, as you might know, cannot be reproduced or redistributed in any form without prior written permission from Fleet Latam and the expert speakers that you will hear during this webinar. My name is Steven Schoofs. I'm the Chief Editor at Nexus Communication and responsible for the content that we bring with the Fleet Latam platform. And it's really a pleasure to have you today in this engaging webinar. Um, why have we chosen the topic of TCO and safety? Well, because the two topics are highly connected. First of all, cost efficiency still is the key priority in terms of uh, fleet management optimization through Latin America. And secondly, you can imagine that everything that has to do with driver safety and road safety is absolutely essential within your vehicle fleet management strategy. Safety is paramount and there is no organization for which safety can't be important. And as you know, when you address safety in the right way, you will have a positive impact on your TCO, your total cost of ownership. The good news today, ladies and gentlemen, is that I am not the one who is going to take you through this webinar. We have among us two real experts that will detail the importance of safety linked to the total cost of ownership. You can see them already on your screen. You will hear from them later on. First, we have Diego Fabrizio Vidrio Torres. He is partner account manager at Geotap. And we also have the pleasure to welcome Joaquin Lisa Ralde, who is Head of Operations at Fleet Management and Leasing Company, RDA Renting. So today we are uh, going to have an engaging webinar. It will take no more than 40 minutes. And to start to kick off, we will have first the insight of Diego Fabrizio Vidrio Torres about the impact of telematics on the lining Let's say the fact that telematics is, first of all, an added value and not an additional cost. So I hope that Diego can hear me and is in the webinar room. Hello, Diego. Hi, Steven. Thank you Hello. very much. Thank you. Thank you for being with us. Also, thank you that Geotap can support this webinar. I think it's really important that we can address to the community, the importance of telematics and safety in a vehicle fleet management environment. And we are really eager to listen to your insights about how telematics is an added value and not an additional cost. So if you are ready, I think all the participants are ready and you can start your presentation. Thank you, Steven. Hi, everybody. Nice to, nice to hear you. Uh, well, uh, my name is Diego Vidrio. I have been working at Geotab for, for eight months, and I will have the pleasure to talk today in this, web this webinar to about TCO benefits through telematics. Indeed, telematics solutions can really help fleet managers to add more value to their business by improving safety, mobility, compliance, productivity, and so on. That's why today I will explain my telematics is actually an add value to business and not to additional cost. So in this slide, we are, we are looking that Geotab has more than 1.9 million devices connected <clears throat> in all the world, and we are the number one telematics company in the world. We have connected almost one device in each continent. We can connect more than 40 billion data points per day. And all the bright lights that you can see in the picture is the data points that we can collect. Uh, can you help me with the next slide, please? Thank you. Uh, the re realities uh, of the Latin America market. 
security policies in Latin America are not the most developed in the world. And that's why we need technologies that support us with this. So let me uh, start with this example. There are 150,000 fatalities in Latin America on the road, which is we need to raise awareness in this and the next generation in order to reduce the worrying number. Another common point in Latin America is the planning of the cities that was not the best and the route was were created in the main cities of Latin America that are not optimal, leading to endless traffic, more accidents due to driver improperties and poor vehicle efficiency. This is good to know that in Latin America, we're increasing using electric resources, such as cars, bicycles, shared cars, scooters, and other different options that we can find in the market. That is why we must explore these solutions that are being developed day by day. Um, with the next one, please. Thank you. Uh, we, we can see uh, in this in, in, in this slide uh, different different points. And um, one or, or no one number one priority is of safety. Our solutions allow the creation of reports containing very, very relevant to useful useful information such, such as, for example, use belt which we can very helpful to make sure that drivers are safe by the purpose of the seat belt. Driver in reverse, it's, it has been proven that driving in reverse is responsible for high collisions and accident rates. Therefore, all solutions can help to avoid it. Vehicles use alert after hours. Through all devices, we can track whenever a vehicle has been used after after hours and apply the necessary measure in order to correct the behavior. Security rules are established in MyJotab. Our platform allows the creation of security rules according to the fleet global and needs. Collision notifications. Through our solutions, fleet manager receive an instant alert whenever collisions take place, which is very helpful to security and safety users. Heat maps. Through our heat map solution, it's possible to identify critical zones such as hard braking or speeding and create rules based on risk, risk, risk exposures. Road impediment detection. Through this one, is capable to identify roads that are not in good conditions that could lead to delays, future vehicles, repairs, or accidents. This helps to improve the fleet management time maintenance and safety. We can create all of these, these points with, a, with reports and we can take actions in our fleet. We can go to the next slide, please. For example, in Yotab we have different solutions additional to a plat our platform. For example, we have a solution in the market that allows driver training. Through these drivers are communicating whenever they commitment a violation against an established rule. We have this solution for real-time training of the driver and we can reduce vehicles maintenance costs, fuel consumption, but the most important thing is we can reduce accidents and driver safety comes first. Automatic collision, collision recover and reconstruction Reconstruction is which very important in order to avoid similar collisions and accidents in the future. We can recover data for a collision in a car accident and rebuild it with the help and accelerometer that our devices has inside. You can give a notification to the fleet manager in real time when you have an accident. Please with the, with the next one. Uh, a route planning and optimizations. Uh, this telematic solution, we can help to make your fleet more productive and with our route planning solution, this means we can help to make routes 
optimals and great savings for few, tire wear and vehicle maintenance to the end customer. The next one, please. Another saving, for example, with fuel saving. Uh, we, we can create this, this fuel saving with our solution by knowing where is the vehicle, driver behavior, and knowing when the fuel was deposited and how much, how much is the actual consumption per kilometer travel. We can identify the, the, the fuel and the consumption for each uh, vehicle and for, the, for each driver too. With the next one, please. Uh, another saving, it's for maintenance purpose. Uh, the problems knowing that the vehicles are being handled in a correctly way. Also seeing the odometer of the vehicle check engine and also with preventing maintenance against kilometers travel. This means we, we can we can have a, a preventive maintenance for, for vehicles and we not to make the correctly vehicles for, for or corrections vehicles in, in the future. The next one, please. Uh, in this part, uh, apply uh, on, for, for, for Canada and, and US and in the north part of, of Mexico. Um, electronic logging device, ELD, uh, is a set of tools we, which we can measure the hours the drivers has been driving. The expectations and conditions of vehicles when they have different drivers in the same fleet. With this, we can reduce accidents on the road, better controls of the fleet, and the most important, security, the safety of drivers and the other people who are in the same road. Next one, please. Uh, savings and productivity. The company is looking for, for this time to make change. Uh, with, this, this, with this information, uh, the companies are looking the best uh, drivers, the, the best vehicles that we, we have on the, on the fleet. Uh, so we can correct this with, with trainings, driver recommendations, and we can, <laughs> since with this, we can saving fuel insurance, traffic violations, and maintenance fleet safety. We can make savings uh, with different uh, options of, of, our, of our product uh, markets, for example, with reducing the, the insurance policies and the traffic, traffic violations with the tickets. In, in, in LATAM, I think it's the, the most uh, common issues with, that we are leading with, with the people, with the drivers. You need to be always informed about your vehicles through our solutions one will know if their vehicle is in appropriate place or in a danger zone. Besides, our solutions can create geo geofences and rules for these points. We can have information for, from the past, which we can compare it with the current information and based on the market decisions on the fleet. We can compare vehicles within our fleet, an example, is, is a vehicle that have the highest mileage with the, with the list. With this, we can deduce many things and make decisions within the fleet. We can also ask why happens and look the best solutions. The next one, please. Uh, for example, we have a, a, a bus fleet and driver productivity with JTAF technology. Uh, in the market with the NFC reader, N NC reader, we can identify which vehicle was being used by a driver in a certain time and in a certain place. With this, we can control the offenses, events that the vehicles may have, and with the appropriate decision making, we can reduce the cost of issue of the vehicles. We can also identify which are the drivers that taking the appropriate routes, the routes that are being marked on the road, and which are the drivers that leave the road more times than which are the routes are not followed. And, may, and maybe that is a pattern 
that we are not seeing, but the drivers do. Let's make into account the opinion of drivers because it can be safety issues. The next one, please. Thank you. Uh, in this in this image, uh, we in this picture we can uh, we can say we can see as mentioned before, Geotab collects a huge amount of data every day. That data can be used in the order to optimize and improve the mobility inside a city. For example, through our data can detect these areas which the usage of the windshield wiper is high, which help us to predict the weather. In addition, to, in addition we can detect harsh braking conditions area, which indicates a dangerous driving area with a possible poor road conditions, intensive curves, or a loop. Lastly, temperature and speeding can also be detected. All, the, all of this information can help to identify, identify the main roads that are in poor conditions and requires urgent repair to identify heavy traffic areas that should be avoided in order to improve mobility and avoid delays or even to identify raining areas and planning your trip according to it. For example, will, will, will this consider a safety issue for drivers? Or will the rain delay a lot, a lot of driver's trip? Therefore, data optimize a fleet or even city. The next one, please. Uh, we can see an example in which there are a bump on the road and the accelerometer is able to, to identify uh, clothing if the road conditions are optimal or not, or if drivers need to take another road and another time when the weather conditions are optimal. The next one, please. Uh, in the big data platform of Yota, we can collect more than 3 billion points per day. With all this information, we can have a more productive and accurate decision for the fleet. Where we possibly did not have information for of some kind of new have uh, an open scope. The next one. Uh, we can see uh, a real event that happened, uh, for example, in, in Bogota, uses of speeding, cars braking, and it, be, it may be because the drivers in this area needs to be more alert or also the fleet manager to know why needs to stop or make sharp turn in certain areas. The next one, please. Um, the, the, in the leasing part, uh, we, we, we know, uh, for example, in South America, the leasing, it's, uh, it's a product of all the value that we are, that we are offering. And for example, in Mexico, leasing, it's, it's a, it's a common, uh, product for, for, for the, for the fleet. And for, we can, you can generate benefits in your fleet with this information in the vehicle collection help the customers to with lower cost and give added value to the service you offer. The security in your fleet is better since you can know where the, and what conditions your vehicles are, controlling everything that happens in your fleet. The next one, please. Uh, the maintenance can be managed in a much more efficient way to with a, with a telemetry solution. We can have calendars in which they inform us when we have to take the vehicles to the workshop and the throws have with the, or the vehicles in optimal conditions. Create an alert when we have to send the vehicle to maintenance service. If we have to be pass in the vehicle or which are the drivers more mishaps that we reduce the cost of our insurance policies. We can know some mechanic failures of the vehicles 
we can integrate software for our platform and everything that happens on the board has have the information firsthand. Um, thank you. Uh, I think this is this is my my final part. Um, I think uh, we can continue with with Joaquin, Stephen. Thank you. Thank you very much, Diego. Thank you for giving insight in the role of telematics and how it is, let's say, an added value and not an added cost for corporate fleets. Um, of course, we would like to make it as uh, practicable as possible, and therefore we have invited Joaquin Lizaralde. He is head of operations at RDA Renting, who is going to detail some business cases around safety experiences in Latin America. But before the, uh, I give the floor to uh, Joaquin, I would like to underline that we will end this webinar with a Q&A session with both the expert speakers. And so we are eager to know your questions and you can send the questions that you have for our expert speakers by using the chat function in the webinar tool. So you will see that there is an option in which you can send your question. Please, if it's addressed to one specific expert, indicate also the name of the expert that makes it a little bit easier for me to moderate the questions afterwards. But so don't forget that we will end this webinar with a Q&A and you can send your questions via the chat function of this webinar tool. So let's now, now go to Joaquin Lizaralde, who is ready, I hope, to give us some more insights about positive business cases around safety in Latin America. Joaquin. Thank you, Stephen, and thank you, Diego, for, for your insights. Well, first of all, thank you, everyone, who has joined this webinar. My name is Joaquin Lizarralde. I'm head of operations from RDA. Uh, we are a fleet management, a full service leasing company here at Argentina and also um, in Uruguay. And today we are gonna talk about telematics and fleet safety, uh, taking into consideration a, a practical case we had implemented this year with, with a major customer of ours here in Argentina. So, um, as I said, this, this program is about telematics and how we can use the different advantages of information. In this case, uh, we apply it to a specific program we put in place with a major agricultural company, a company that has more than 500 vehicles here at Argentina and has global operations within South America, Europe, Asia, and a lot of parts of, of, of the world. So their standards are pretty high in terms of safety. And one of their concerns uh, in their approach to us was how we can use technology to avoid some deviations or, or some losses that we are having, that they were having uh, at that time uh, because of uh, unsafe driving and other issues that we will review on this presentation. So if we can move forward with the next slide. We can see here uh, the prevention program we put in place. It have uh, a few big objectives. First of all, evaluate the drivers by detecting behaviors that uh, threaten their safety, their vehicles, or those around them. Of course, avoid material and human losses. And at last but not least, avoid all the expenses that are related with this kind of, of actions. Regarding the program operation, we do uh, in, in those in, in two uh, different uh, aspects. First of all, evaluation to take the data provided by the telematics uh, services, which is in our case, uh, Geotab, um, to create a scoring uh, or a table that we will look after in, in the next slides in order to have uh, different measurements and comparison between the driver's behavior and put in place a rewarding compliant program. This means to reward those drivers that were 
complying accurately with the safety policies of the company and put in a transparent way to all the organization which were the drivers that were not complying and were putting themselves at risk and, and their company assets and of course uh, they were having maybe uh, less productivity because of uh, this kind of deviations. So if we can move forward. The program variables were set up mainly in uh, two or three aspects. First, speeding, of, of course, the logic of the, this variable is, was to, comparison, to make a comparison between the real speed that a driver uh, was having between the maximum speed allowed in a specific circulation road. We must consider here that uh, these 500 vehicles are dispersed all around Argentina, which is a pretty large country. So we have a lot of local um, um, regulations and different, uh, different speed limits uh, within the different roads and so on. Uh, of course, the main goal was to study any deviations regarding the actual and the real speed that the drivers were having between these maximums uh, allowed uh, limits. And of course, this, uh, the result of this measurement has uh, an impact uh, and uh, uh, it was considered, uh, and we have different kind of, of measurements here, which I will be explained. If a driver is um, having a, an, is over the speed limit, but it uh, it allows him to go back with the speed and immediately in a very short lapse of time, the fault was considered very slight. Uh, on the opposite, if we have a prolonged speeding, this is a driver which is aware that he's over the speed limit, but maintains the, those uh, speed and. Uh, of course, as I said, it's aware of this. It was considered uh, a very serious valuation and the impact in the scoring was very high. So if we can move forward, we can see other variables that, such as excessive driving. This is those drivers that were uh, conducting more than 650 kilometers in the same day. This was of course to evaluate fatigue and to avoid any any injuries or safe or unsafe uh, behaviors regarding to uh, fatigue and the impact of this variable was moderate uh, but it was considered into account as a very important part of the program and we have night driving the logic of this variable was to identify those drivers that uh, drives more than 100 kilometers between 8 a.m. and 6 a.m. on the next day, which was which is the time uh, they uh, should be resting in order to have uh, a safe behavior and a very productive uh, use of their time. The impact of this, uh, of this non-compliance is also moderate as uh, excessive uh, driving. So here we have the four variables. Uh, being the, the more serious one, uh, the one in which the driver is speeding for more than 30 seconds. This is a very prolonged amount of time. So if we can move forward, here we have data and reports. This is very important because in order to use all the information you have from the telematics device, you need to have it organized you need the appropriate person to receive the report. This is the leadership, the, the head of a specific group or a specific group of vehicles had to receive it in time with very accurate information in order to uh, combine all the data and make the monthly uh, scores, scoring sorry, uh, published to the whole uh, company. So we have automatically set with Geotab the, the reports, which was uh, a very, very good and very uh, efficient way to have all the information uh, in, in the hand of the decision makers in a very uh, efficient way, month by month. So moving forward, here we have, for example, 
another important aspect of the program is well we have the information in head of the leaders but we have we need also to have information hand to the to the drivers so thank you to the my geotab application for for mobile cell, phone, cell phones we are able to give access to drivers to see how they perform along that specific month okay i received one or two uh, violations in in the scoring where do i i have them and why so they can study in uh, in a self service way their behavior over the the past 30 days and be able to take measures to uh, get in line into the next uh, scoring for uh, the following month so this is very important because you need the driver to be uh, sure that the information that is being uh, qualifying by it's accurate and and to be, and to give them the possibility to see it is is very important we found this uh, sincerely a, a key uh, component of the success of the of the program so moving on regarding implementation uh, as i said this fleet this specific fleet was uh, in a very large territory we have a lot of vehicles with a lot of drivers so we train more than 50 installers to meet the demand and geographic dispersion of the of the company uh, this was made by a platform uh, every installer uh, log into the platform and uh, certificate online or on their abilities to install the, the device. So the result of this was that we can, in an average time of 20 minutes, uh, install uh, the device on a vehicle. This allowed multiple installation to be carried out in the same day. And also we have self-consultation of instructions and frequently asked question for the installer as well as the, as the driver. The installer can go through the app and see if it's uh proceeding correctly in terms of uh, how to plug the, the device and how to set up the information in order for the device to start uh, reproducing the data and so on so regarding the implementation these were main factors to being considered and if we can move on we can go up to some challenges we faced it's very important to know that once you establish a program like this, you will face, of course, some challenges uh, from the hand of the, of the drivers or maybe the leaderships. It's not easy, especially in South America, when you uh, try to go forward with programs like this, for people to, to understand that the main goal is not to be, uh, to control them in, in a very traditional, uh, way of the term but to use the information accurately to provide them with safety to know which are the unsafe behaviors they have with their vehicle and to act proactively to uh, resolve them so that's a, a main challenge we face in the first stages of the of the program um, later on of course we have the the, the importance to continue combining the data with other technologies to integrating the, the device, the Geotab device with other uh, informations uh, and to promote driving training based on the scoring that each driver has month by month. So we can move on with the next slide. Some of the conclusions. Um, telematics. Uh, within the use we we are uh, implementing with GeoDAV, it's it's very good because it is an open platform which allows us expandability capability to to move on to integrate the information with other softwares we use for for fleet maintenance uh, for documentation administration and other very important things within the fleet management world. So it's very good to have a uh, a solution that is open and allows you to combine information and to generate continue added value within the whole uh, fleet management operation. The result of this, of course, is a satisfied customer. And with customer, I mean not only the fleet manager, which is 
um, going through their specific goals in terms of activities of the year. We have to, to put in place a, a safety program or we, or we need to reduce costs because of breakdowns or uh, collisions. But the driver, which is the main, uh, the main um, integrate of this equation that we need to, to be very aware of, is the driver that needs to understand the, the importance of the program and to feel the support for the FMC and to consider that, this, uh, that these tools add value to their daily basis, uh, to the daily basis work. In the future, what we think that we need to continue to do is to continue to work with, with the data. It's impressive the amount of data you can collect from vehicles. And it is important that we continue search searching and looking for more innovative ways to combine the information, to generate added value reports, reports that allow you to take real-time uh, decisions, but also to continue generating uh, tools that allows self-management. It's a, a reality nowadays within customer experience that uh, drivers do not want to, to talk to a call center or to go through a lot of people in order to have uh, uh, information in their hand, but to create specific and technological channels uh, to allow the driver to be uh, in touch uh, with the service 24-7. Uh, so if we can move forward. So that's all by the moment. Uh, I thank you all for, for your time. And of course, Stephen, we will open now the space for the so question and answer. Thank you, indeed. Thank you very much. Thank you, Joaquin. Um, we will also invite now Diego to answer some questions. So Diego, if you can unmute yourself, this would be perfect. Thank you very much. Looking a little bit at the questions that popped in. And so, uh, dear participants, if you have a question, don't hesitate. It's your chance to ask Diego and Joaquin your question. So, um, first question for you, Diego. Um, in the beginning of your presentation, you mentioned a little bit the coverage of Geotap, explaining that you have almost 2 million connected vehicles globally and 40 billion, that's quite a lot, data points collected daily. Of course, we are here in a Fleet Latam webinar. Could you give us a little bit more insight into the coverage of Geotap in Latin America? Are you able to serve customers in every country? What are the most important ones and what is to expect in the near future? Yes, Stephen. Uh, for example, for LATAM, we have uh, like uh, 100,000 devices connected uh, uh, from Mexico to Argentina. Uh, our principal customers, for example, uh, it could be uh, PepsiCo. Uh, <clears throat> and for for the for for the for the next uh, for the next uh, years, we are expecting to 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 create these numbers uh, in twice or three times that we that we have okay um another question for you it's more linked to the technical side of the solution so um the solution of geotap in terms of telematics can read let's say uh, the data that comes from the vehicle and from the driver behavior. The question is straightforward. Um, so you get access to the canvas information of the vehicle and you have from all the car manufacturers also the approval to get the data. Yes, yes. Uh, in, in, this, in this point we have, uh, uh, we, we don't, Mm. We can we can be sure that we can read uh, the data from the vehicles mm -hmm. and the warranties don't be affected uh, for for the cars. 
because we don't cut any cable uh, or any we don't make any additional uh, installations we only need to 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 plug and play the device for the obd2 port mm -hmm. and that's that's the only thing that we need to do okay perfect a question for joaquin uh joaquin um <clears throat> We saw in the presentation from Diego that telematics, and also you on the line that in your presentation, that telematics has a positive effect regarding safety in terms of fuel efficiency. It can mm -hmm. be used for maintenance. It will stimulate productivity. So these are all added values related to telematics. Now, still, there are quite some companies that are reluctant, hesitant, when it comes to implementing telematics, which seems a bit strange if you look at all the advantages. So what would you say as a recommendation to those companies that are hesitating to implement telematics in terms of the starting point and how to, let's say, address telematics in the right way within their company? Okay, it's a very good question because Traditionally, uh, a lot of companies associate telematics with GPS uh, tracking or GPS record, which is not the same. So uh, it's very often to find with companies that are very reluctant to move forward with a telematic solution because they associate immediately uh, a device with the tracking of the person. And, and, they, and this is like a barrier that, a barrier that you need to trespass in order to show them all the benefits that, that you mentioned. Uh, one good strategy could be, for example, for those companies, I don't know, in pharma, for example, you have a lot of companies that are reluctant to move forward with telematics because uh, they say the they invasion to the privacy uh, it's, it's an issue for them or that. So there are some companies that we propose them, okay, we can uh, shut off the GPS tracking, for example, but we can still gather a lot of information of how the vehicle is being driven. For example, if, mm -hmm. if it has harsh, harsh braking or uh, rush accelerations, or it's uh, using ralenty a lot of time and that uh, goes directly into fuel. So there are a lot of information that you can uh, segregate from the GPS uh, location and that are a lot of uh, richness for, for the company. That could be one strategy. And other one that we've been using here from a long time is, uh, okay, let's do a test. Uh, maybe we can start with your substitute vehicles or your pool vehicles where nobody would feel like um, uh, invaded in their privacy and you can uh, start looking at the benefits you have from having information from, from, for maintenance, for example, to have uh, the possibility to uh, provide a customer with predictive maintenance because you are seeing in your email or in a, such, in a way, for example, in a text message that you have a vehicle with a check engine light on so you can uh, alert them and say this vehicle needs to go to the garage to make a repair or take the, this kind of actions that will start like unlocking uh, their man mindset to allow the, the telematics to move forward in a, in a specific industry. Okay. But I should say that still we have a lot of customers that are very happy with the results and are, are leaving this kind of uh, uh, thing yeah, beside, behind because they are now understanding the importance of having real and accurate information. Okay, so if I understand you correctly, you are saying it's not really essential when you implement telematics that you do it straight away for every company car driver or every truck. You can also say, okay, let's build sort of the easy business case with some of the cars, the pool cars perhaps, where it can be a little bit easier and then test it. Exactly, that's correct. Okay. Good, thank you. Um, Joaquin, can you um, tell us a little bit, because I come back on that, there are some questions related to the accuracy 
of the data. Um, some question, for example, due to uh, the technology, if the data that is generated by the uh, OBD, uh, if they are 100% correct, in what way can you be sure that the data that you track are also 100% correct data that can be used, let's say, in the correct way by the fleet manager in the company? Okay, it's a good question because within the industry and all the OMs, you have a lot of different vehicles that are built with different protocols. Uh, I have said, I would say that Geotab has a pretty comprehension uh, lecture of those values. There are uh, the majority of the vehicles are uh, inside their platforms and you can see that the protocols are read correctly. For example, once you plug in a device, you notice that the device automatically knows the, the bin of that vehicle or the odometer. Uh, that is information do, that you can check in real time uh, with the vehicle. But of course, you have also, and especially in Latin America, we must be realistic, uh, some vehicles that are maybe a little bit old or they are built with uh, protocols that are not being used anymore for the major brands or major o OMs. And there you will have the device reading uh, less uh, KPIs or less indicators, but regarding speed, location, and harsh braking, uh, accelerations you will have very precise information because that is uh, provided by the device specifically mm -hmm. and of course something that you have to consider are the telecommunications network it's yes. not the same the, uh, the speed within the, the way the information is transmitted in a very urban area uh, beside um, in comparison to uh, a very I don't know rural er area where you have an open field and you have less uh, coverage for the, the cell phones uh, company but even though the device uh, storage the information it save it in the device and then when they have the possibility to connect to the antenna it will bring onto the platform all the information that was gathered in those let's say blind uh, spots uh, of uh, communications but this is more or less what I can tell you about is uh, okay. accurate of the information is it's pretty high uh, but of course it will depend on, on the fleet and you have to do some consultancy to to know uh, how a fleet is composed and mm -hmm. the major brands it has and, and so on to have a hundred percent and accurate uh, implementation of a telematics program Okay, Diego, uh, question for you. Can you, uh, two short questions. Uh, does your solution or do you envision uh, also to detect, uh, for example, driver fatigue? So when a driver becomes really, let's say, uh, exhausted and falls into sleep, is that also something that you, that your solution can do or would do in the future? Yes, uh, indeed, we, we have a marketplace. Uh, in this marketplace, we have a different uh, hardware and software uh, uh, additional to the, to the platform and our hardware. So we can find a provider that we can have those information and travel to our, uh, our platform from, to my Geotab. So right now, uh, we, we need to to search uh, in different countries for new for new partners, uh, for example, for biometrics and uh, fatigue uh, for for the, for the drivers. Okay, very good, uh, Joaquin. Uh, short answer from you on the question that I also asked to Diego. Um, can you just mention the current coverage of RDA renting in Latin America? Yeah, we currently have active operations throughout all Argentina and in Uruguay. Okay, okay. And so you are also working in partnership with Element, is that correct? Yeah, that's correct. We are part of Element and Arval Alliance uh, within three years ago. So we have a very close relation to them and their operations in, in, in all LATAM and Europe, uh, you may know. Okay, uh, another question for you is linked to uh, 
uh, something that you mentioned in your presentation, uh, you say uh, that uh, an important aspect is to make the drivers being more self-managed. Could you a little bit elaborate on that uh, in, a, yes, in a short way, let's say, how you should process this to achieve a self-managed driver? Okay, it's a good question because um, if you publish a, a scoring, for example, in our program, they receive a, like a dashboard with their specific uh, points they get month by month. So they see they, they are a very good driver, a medium driver or a risk driver. That's very hard information that in case you have a, a, a driver that needs to challenge that information and to see uh, why uh, he received such a, a scoring, you need to have a tool to be able for them to, to connect uh, to the information in a very fast and a very comfortable way. That's uh, what we, we mean with self-management. We have uh, my Geotap to management app, so there the driver has access only to the information for its specific vehicle. So we hear from the platform program the different level of access so uh, if my vehicle this uh this for focus i will only see my specific vehicle all historical information uh i can download reports in case i in case i want to i don't know talk to my leader to say okay i have this fault here but this was because i need to go to this meeting and i need to meet the the sales uh, objectives of the company. There are a lot of factors that are involved into this uh, equation, but if you have information in a very easy way to, to be handled for, for the driver, you will have for sure a more successful implementation of the, of the program. Okay, and the final question for Diego. Diego, can you tell us a little bit uh, what is the return on investment of a telematics program? Can you tell us a little bit uh, uh, what can, let's say, a company expect in terms of return on investment? Because I can imagine that for some companies, they also hesitate about the initial deploying cost of a telematics program. Yes, um, and the... the... I think the main purpose uh, of of this part is the savings. Uh, for example, the main the the main savings could be uh, insurance mm -hmm. uh, with uh, the fuel uh, and the and the tires. Uh, I think we can uh, make different uh, stops in the in the platform to reduce this cost and, for example, in order to planning routes. To, to have uh, the, your fleet in optimal condition, conditions and to use the, the vehicles that, that you have uh, with higher uh, kilometers and the fleet, the, the vehicles that you don't use too. I think uh, this is the main purpose, the, the, the fuel, the insurance and the, and the tires. <laughs> Okay, thank you very much. Uh, we have to uh, finish our webinar here. Um, I would like to thank uh, Geotap for their support uh, by organizing with us this webinar. Also, thanks to Diego and Joaquin, uh, because they did a great job in explaining how um, safety um, is of importance through technology in Latin America. As you can see on the screen, there is a recorded version of the webinar, and this will be made available online on our website, globalfleet.com, in the upcoming days. So um, you can relive the webinar also in the near future, and you will receive a short email with a satisfaction survey, only a few questions in order to help us improve the future webinars, and so we hope that you can fill in and complete that satisfaction survey so that we know what to do for an upcoming webinar. And finally, I would like to thank all the participants for being with us, and we hope to meet with you soon in another Fleet LATAM webinar. Thank you very much, and have a nice day. Bye-bye.